everybody, Keith Wilson at the Trombone Shop at Schmidt Music here. I really appreciate all of the comments and feedback that everybody has given on all of the videos that we have on our channel here thus far. One of the things that a number of folks have mentioned is that they'd like to hear um, some of the differences between some of the different valve options out on the trombone market right now. This has been one of the biggest areas of innovation in the trombone community over the past 20, 25 years. Um, a proliferation of all of these different valve designs. And for a lot of folks, it's a little confusing about, well, why do we have all these different designs? What can they do for me? So for the next uh, couple weeks here, I'm going to be playing for you some of these different valve designs, comparing them back and forth between some of the standard rotor designs so that you can hear a little bit for yourself what's going on with these, start to get maybe a little bit of an idea, well, I might like this option versus that option. So today, I'm going to start off with most likely the most popular valve option outside of our standard rotor here, the axial flow or the Thayer valve. Um, this has become very ubiquitous in the community. We see these all over the place. And again, after our standard rotor, this is the most common design that we're going to see out in the trombone community. Um, it's really astonishing considering that this was not invented until 1976 by Orla Ed Thayer. Now the whole idea with any different valve design is we're trying to change and we're trying to moderate how the air is passing through the instrument. And that's one thing that a lot of people get confused about right away is that, okay, well, how often do I use my valve? 15% of the time, 20% of the time, how important is it to have these different valve designs if I'm not using it that much? And the answer to that is, well, whether or not we're actually using the valve, activating the trigger to route the air through the extra tubing of the F side of the instrument, the air still has to pass through the valve. And so the valve design is going to affect the overall sound, playability, response of the instrument. Now with our standard rotor, we can see that there are some inherent points where as the air moves in and out of the valve, there's some sharp turns to it. As the air passes through the valve itself, it's actually changing shape inside the valve. Now that's creating some resistance for the airflow. Now resistance by itself is not inherently good or bad, it just is. But depending on the player, depending on what you need the instrument to do, the sound you're looking for, the context, the genres you're playing it in, the, the different amount of resistance can give you, again, a different sound, different response. Now the whole idea with the axial flow design, why at there started working on this is we were trying to remove a lot of those inherent choke points on the standard rotor. So we can see the axial flow is obviously quite a bit larger and what this does is it allows for much smoother transition for the air as it passes through the valve. Not only are there much more subtle changes to the, the curve of the air, but the air column itself doesn't change shape. It remains that same bore size all the way through the valve. And that, of course, is going to change what you know, the shape of that column of air, how it feels for us, how, the, how it responds for us. Now, again, it's not a good or bad, it's just a different here. But I want to play for you just a little bit between both of these instruments. Um, these are both Eastman models. This is the H28G, H29G here with the axial flow valve. The only difference between them, standard rotor versus axial flow valve. So I'm going to play both of these for you so that maybe you can hear at least a little bit of the difference in the timbre, the sound for the instrument. <laughs> So again, that's just a little snippet of the differences between these. You know, I can tell you as a player, I can certainly feel a difference in how the air is moving through it. The amount of control that I have with it, I feel like with the axial flow valve, I am going to get a broader sound. Um, I can push a little bit more air, I can give it a little bit thicker core, but it also changes the response of the valve as well. On some of these technical passages, I have to use my air a little bit differently to get the 
the same type of response as they get out of the standard building. So again, it's not a right or wrong kind of answer, it's a different. What's the right fit for you? As always, I recommend if you get a chance, really try these out. It's one thing to go through and listen to the videos, but it's gonna make a difference for you to actually be able to put your hands on it, play through it, and really see what the right fit is for you. So, I really appreciate you watching. Um, if you have any comments about these rotors versus axial, uh, please feel free to leave some comments below. Um, if you like the video, think about giving us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, think about subscribing to the channel. We're gonna be doing a lot more videos like this. Hopefully you're gonna find some stuff that is interesting, informative for you. And as always, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. So thank you very much again for watching. We'll see you soon.